all right let's talk about volatility today so we i'm on our options dashboard that you can go to by going to the sidebar and clicking here and we have many options based tools here that uh, are very complex and that are very comprehensive so we have gone over some of them such as the algo flow you know, the dark pool levels the sr levels uh, things like that previously but what we haven't done is go through uh, some of the widgets or some of the charts we have for volatility so that's what we are going to try to do today so if you just go down i am going to go straight to the volatility charts these are the four charts we have uh, based on implied volatility and uh, i'll just uh, quickly give out my thoughts on how do i interpret these charts and how do i uh, use them to make any plays if uh, if i'm uh, sort of using them and hopefully that will help others sort of understand what we are uh, showing with these four charts so the first chart is uh, term structure and term structure simply means uh, what is the implied volatility at every expiration date in the future and since uh, there are many strikes at uh, every expiration uh, we are looking at the mean implied volatility not just the implied uh, not just like implied volatility for a particular stock if you do want to look at implied volatility uh, or uh, if you do want to look at implied volatility in terms structure for a particular strike you can easily do that from here so let's see how the 420 is looking so the 420s iv is very high uh, in short term and then it slowly uh, increases as we go farther in expiration but uh, let's uh, stick to the aggregate chart so there are a couple of tips here that i have learned by doing some data analysis that i wanted to share so what we are seeing here is that short term uh, let's say so i am making this video on august 14 uh, so but uh, since this is sunday we still have the contracts from friday here but this is uh, where we are going to open on monday and so let's assume the yellow line is the iv uh, the mean iv or the term structure right now and then these white lines are term structures from the previous 10 uh, trading days and we just want to gauge whether the term structure is changing or not which is why we have the white lines on the back so what we are seeing here is uh, the mean iv for the next uh, two expirations is uh, slightly low but then uh, it's uh, considerably high for uh, contracts expiring on 19th of august which i believe is a monthly expiration as well and then it starts going down uh, for the next couple of uh, expirations so for, for for september and then it starts going down uh, for the next couple of expirations uh, then we have this is the the monthly for september and then this i believe this i believe is the monthly for october and then this is november this is december so most of the non monthly expirations are getting low ivs but overall you can see that this goes higher to this then we we keep going higher so what we are seeing here is the iv actually goes up with monthly expirations sure it goes down uh, with these non monthly expirations but if you're just looking at monthly expirations then the iv the mean iv and uh, the term structure is actually facing upwards right and any time the term structure faces upwards that that's usually a good sign uh, for market's health because most of the time when we are in a bull market and when we are uh, trending in a market like trending Uh, slowly to the upside in a the market then what you'll see is the term structure is actually uh, trending upwards which we, which we also call uh, contango and so iv for a short term contracts or for shorter expirations is low while iv or impl- or mean implied volatility for longer out contracts or for farther expirations is actually high which is the norm because most of the time uh, we are going up let's say the the market overall is obvious, obviously always bullish in the long run but when we are going up the iv since we are mostly going up the implied volatility for these short term contracts is not really that high but that changes when we are in a bear market or when we have a sort of lot of volatility in the market in that case and that usually happens when we have a bear market or when we have like a huge bear sort of rally to the downside that that causes the short term implied volatility to go up significantly and then the longer term implied volatility actually decreases so then what we have is instead of going up what we have is a chart that goes from top to bottom and that's what we call backwardation 
So anytime you see that and the, sh the short term IV starts getting juiced up, then that can also uh, be a sign that since now all of the volatility is being sort of put into these shorter term contracts, uh, longer term volatility might be low, which could be a sign that slightly longer term, we might go back to the normal ways of the markets, uh, which could be a sort of bullish or a trendy market. But that just tells you that the market market participants are expecting some short term volatility. But as long as the curve is going down and towards farther out expiration, we know that uh, IV or implied volatility is expected to decrease soon. And if you just like go back over the last couple of years and if you look at how term structure was, I'll just give you a couple of examples that I found out. So during our COVID lows, term structure was in backwardation. So IV for short term contracts was extremely high and the longer term contracts mean IV was very low, which again could have signified that we are going to uh, go up from here. Uh, these days, uh, especially over the last uh, month, we have been in a slight bull market and you can see this contango where we are slowly increasing in IV. So that's the normal market behavior. Yeah. And if you like see a huge uh, sort of uh, IV going from very low values to very high values, then that could also mean that market participants are expecting some volatility in the future. Uh, and whichever expiration that is, maybe they are expecting some volatility around that. So elections could be sort of one time where IV around those expirations might be jacked up. Uh, so just know about those things like why they're happening. But yeah, the general rule that I've seen, especially for like, just uh, if you're just keeping things simple is when we are uh, in contango, uh, that mostly happens in normal trendy markets. But that also may that also means that uh, there could be a, a volatile event in the future because IV for a future contracts is, is high, which which means we are expecting some volatility in the future. And when we are in a when when we are in backwardation, then that typically means that uh, we could uh, see a bottom soon because short term IV is so jacked up and the longer term IV is pretty low now. So just some uh, tips. Uh, I am still a student of the markets. I'm still learning these things every day. But these are some of my findings and some of my observations. Then we have the skew structure. So skew is something that uh, a lot of people don't know about, especially retail traders. So skew is simply the difference between a 10 delta put uh, and a 10 delta call. So if skew is going high, that means that these 10 delta puts are priced much higher than these 10 delta calls. And that's what we are seeing here as well. Uh, we are seeing that skew is actually going higher over the next uh, couple of expirations. And this is something where I'm still trying to learn for like solid strategies that have worked over the last 20 years and that are based on the SKU structure. So this is the term structure, but for SKU, because we are looking at SKU at, at every expiration instead of looking at IV. And so for right now, this just uh, tells you that uh, these puts are priced in uh, higher as we are moving forward in time and it do what you want to do with that observation but that's where we are at right now hopefully we will soon build strategies and figure out strategies on top of this then we have the volatility surface this is something most people are familiar with this it simply looks at the main implied volatility for different strikes and uh, you might have heard the uh, term volatility smile that happens where uh, the volatility for in the money or for at the money actually options is at one point but as soon as we start going out of the money on both sides on sort of the call side and the put side we see elevated IVs and that can uh, cause the IV to look like like this and then it can uh, cause it to look like a smile but this looks more like a smirk where we have elevated IVs on the put side uh, so this like since we are going down it probably means we are looking uh, mostly on the out of the money put side but then we also have some, some elevation very very little but some elevation here so this is mostly a smirk not a smile but in many stocks and in many names you will actually see an iv smile where iv at out of the money options would be the lowest and then as we go out of the money iv starts to increase and there are many reasons uh, for that uh, one logical reason is that uh, out of the money, let's assume out of the money puts are mostly bought as insurance and insurance is not uh, cheap. So in, for insurance, you have to pay an extra premium, which is why these out of the money uh, puts have increased IV, which, which obviously means their 
contract prices are relatively uh, costly as well okay so how do we use this so a couple of uh, things that i have been learning about is uh, it is it is a lot more important to look at relative volatility surfaces than just simply the volatility surface today which is why you again have these uh, white lines on the back similar to how we had these which is the volatility surface over the last 10 to 15 days so what are we seeing here we are seeing here that the volatility 10 15 days ago was slightly elevated on the 423 or 420 onwards but now the volatility for those contracts have gone down and so again uh, take what you want out of that uh, just the fact that volatility for these strikes was higher but now it has gone down uh, could be used in many different option strategies uh, we will uh, discuss this a lot in a lot more details uh, but i'm running a couple of strategies to see if we can leverage this sort of comparison between volatility volatility surfaces to build options plays uh, that are uh, based on volatility not on a directional move and then we uh, we have implied volatility rank which simply measures where iv is right now compared to the iv in the past one good rule of thumb uh, to remember here is that uh, implied volatility is for the most part a mean reverting quantity so anytime the iv goes down the, the iv rank goes down or even the iv goes down we do expect it to revert it to its mean so the the, the bar behind is the actual uh, raw implied volatility and the purple line is the implied volatility rank or iv percentile what some people call it and what we are seeing here is let's assume this 2025 level is the this level actually let's assume anything even if you actually look at this 25 seems like the, the average iv for s p you can see that anytime we are above that we come down to this 25 level then sure we go up but then we come down again we go up we come down so this is a level that we keep coming back to which is why i say iv is a main reverting quantity again for the most part there are obviously some tail events where it can go up or down for, for a long period of time and not mean revert so one thing that you can do is when when iv is high or low you can make plays based on that and you can figure out your own op options strategies but the basic idea is that if iv is a high we do expect in the future if iv rank is high let's say above 50 we do expect that iv rank to actually come to 50 in the future at what time obviously we are not fully sure but just the information that the iv is too elevated right now and it might come down it could be useful because when iv is elevated let's say iv, is, IV rank is at 100 you shouldn't be going ahead and buying short term let's say call options or even put options because with increased iv the contracts are going to be a lot more costly as well with a median or with low iv contracts would be much cheaper so just some sort of general uh, things that i've been learning about implied volatility and there are so many books that i have yet to read there are many books that i am reading right now that will give me more information on how do you actually use all of these charts we have developed so most of these charts come from just sort of reading up on different books and different papers watching different uh, podcasts tutorials and things like that but once we have drawn these charts what we are doing now is obviously learn more about them but also build strategies and back test them historically to see if there is a more subject if there is a more objective way uh, to gauge or, or to actually choose uh, how these volatility measures are going to impact the market both directionally and just based on volatility and hopefully we will we, we will be able to do that soon but uh, until then i still wanted to discuss some ideas that i had uh, some thoughts about these charts that we have and hopefully again that is useful to our users uh, thanks again for watching this video i'll see you guys around